deciding which device to get for your home lab network. Should you get this? Uh, or should you go with something as small as this? In this video, I'll be providing my experience using both to help you make a decision as to which device would be best for you. Whew, that thing was heavy. It can be really difficult to figure out, you know, what piece of gear would you like to implement in your home environment to, you know, use as you're studying in IT and progressing with whatever you're doing. Nowadays, you can find equipment that wasn't just wasn't available five years ago, which is pretty awesome. But there's a lot of things to consider when it can get a little fuzzy when you're just comparing prices on paper as well as performance, as opposed to getting a real life feel as to how it is to interact with each of these devices and understanding in depth their capabilities. To get started, this is uh, this is one heavy device for sure. What's nice about it is when I got it, five years ago or so, is I was able to get this on eBay for about $300. Now at the time, I wasn't making that much money, but $300 was on the cheap end for what I was getting compared to price that it would cost to buy something like this new, like which was going for like $3,000, $4,000 at the time. You could easily get an enterprise grade switch off eBay that was just being recycled because the company, I guess, bought better servers or something uh, for about $300. And the specs of this device is it has 24 cores, but goes up to 48 threads. So technically you have 48 virtual CPUs within this device. And then the RAM, currently I think there's like 128 gigs of RAM or 196, something like that, um, which isn't even the max. That's insane. It, it had the ability to be upgraded. I could add way more storage if I wanted to. If you see these drives right here, this is what I could use to add more space to this device easily. So in terms of expandability, I knew it was future proofing, um, but again, I was just buying it based off of the specs and what I thought it would be, be able to do. Like that's really beefy on paper and the device that I have next to it, this small mini server, can't come close to the specs that this bigger device offers. But we'll dive into that in just a moment. Now, my situation when I bought this is, you know, all of my equipment that I was doing for IT was in my room. Essentially, I had this right underneath my desk and that's how I had it connected up to my network. And so the con of this was that the noise that this thing generates from the fans that are inside it to keep the components of this device cool are extremely loud. It sounds like a jet getting ready to take off. And that is extremely annoying. And it can be a little difficult to concentrate unless you're wearing some headphones, but even still, it's a really annoying high fan pitch sound. And another drawback is that this thing takes a ton of power. So performance wise, it's really nice. But the con is that this thing is extremely loud and not ideal for if you're utilizing a device within your own home room. So that brings me to this little device right here. Is it worth it checking out a mini server in 2024? You know, this is the device I, I just mentioned a moment ago, this will not touch the performance capabilities of that bigger counterpart, but is it good enough to do the job? And I would say it is, and I'll share why. Back when I initially got started with IT, before I even purchased that other server, I was doing things off of my laptop and that laptop had only four cores and about 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that's what I was working with to run a software called GNS3 and attempted to run EVENG at the time just to at least get one virtual image up and running within my environment. And you know, it, it struggled. Uh, that laptop struggled to, <laughs> to handle that to say the least. But when you look at a device like this, what's pretty cool about it is that this blows the performance of my old laptop out of the water. Like it's, it's not even funny. The specs capabilities of this is it can go up to a max of 64 gigabytes of RAM. That's right, 64. 
that's a lot of freaking RAM for a device this small. Second is it also has the capability of having eight cores and 16 threads, which means you essentially get 16 virtual cores, which in my case would have been four times more cores than what I initially had on my laptop when I started out in the IT space. This thing storage wise can go up to four terabytes. You only have one SSD slot in order to put in that storage device that you choose to go with. So you do sort of want to choose which one you go with the first round, first time around. I mean, for a lab device, it really comes down to how much storage do you need? And it depends on the workloads that you're throwing at it. But I can say four terabytes is definitely overkill for what I use my servers for. One, two terabytes is great. I don't know if you you can really get a sense of the form factor of this thing, but this thing is incredibly small. You have a good port selection. You have your power port. You have a ethernet port for internet connectivity. You have two USB ports, another two USB ports. So that's a total of four on the back and then two display ports. Uh, you also on the front get two USB-C ports, one which is USB 4 and a microphone jack, which is sweet. Typically you only get a headphone jack, so that's a, that's a nice touch. So one thing that I do wanna point out is that I was able to pick up this little device on Amazon for about $350. I want to say. And that came bare bones, nothing. It didn't have Windows or anything installed. It had the CPU that comes with the 16 cores that I mentioned, um, but everything else I would have to manually install. And so I separately purchased 64 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive to put into this. Again, with that flexibility, you could figure out what specs you would need, and that could drastically lower your cost. Or you could get a pre-configured model uh, that I think they sell with one terabyte or two terabytes of storage and 32 gigabytes of RAM, which would drive the cost up to about $500. And I know $500 is no small feat, but in terms of what you're getting and the capabilities of that device, is it worth the money? I would say it's a pretty good investment. In the description, I will have affiliate links if you're interested at all at checking out either of these devices. If you do purchase using the link, a portion of what you spend will come to the channel at no cost to you. But of course, that's what just allows me to keep pumping out these helpful videos for you guys. As always, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel to stay tuned for more helpful tech tutorials. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.